Joining me on the show, Dr. Chung Lai. He is the president of the Prospect Foundation, which is a Taiwan-based foreign policy think tank. Uh, he is joining me from Taipei. Uh, Laura Hart is the director at the European-based uh, human rights NGO Safeguard Defenders, joining me from Rome. Andrew Leung is international and independent China strategist based in Hong Kong. We also have Ashok Sajanhar, uh, former diplomat, joining me from Norway. Thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, on the special show of News Epicenter. Laura Hart, going to begin with you. Joe Biden and Xi Jinping want to clearly avoid an open conflict, but neither has made an attempt to alter their competing narratives, which was illustrated again by their contrasting statements about Thursday's call. Given the kind of statements that are coming from both the sides, you know, whoever plays with fire will get burned, and the other side warning of serious consequences, where is this entire visit heading? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me and very much looking forward to hearing also from the other speakers uh, on the show, especially from Taipei, obviously. Um, well, I think when we talk about playing with fire, we have to be very clear that there's only one side really playing with fire. Uh, and that's obviously the Chinese Communist Party in, in this moment. Um, on the one hand, we have the Speaker of the US House of Congress making a visit to a democratic, friendly government um, representing those democratic values that standing for human rights for the rule of law uh, that obviously unites uh, the people from Taiwan, uh, the people from the US, but I'd say with the people of Europe uh, and, and other nations as well, obviously. And then, you know, in response, we have obviously um, a very insecure government um, acting, hmm. acting out almost, I'd say, a bit as a child with, you know, uh, escalating these kind of military exercises, now announcing military operations overnight. For sure, we are talking about, um, as far as we can see, limited uh, military operations. And I do hope that those lines of communication, uh, which seems to have been restored or reinforced uh, during the call between President Biden um, and Secretary General Xi uh, mm -hmm. last week will obviously help to, to prevent any escalation. But I think we need to be very clear on who is escalating here, who is acting out, who is playing uh, with fire here. And just a small note on, on your introduction, which I think is so important to highlight, when the Chinese side speaks of reunification, this dream of reunification with Taiwan, it's always very important that they've never controlled um, Taiwan. Ta never, Taiwan has never been under control of the Chinese Communist Party, so I don't think we should be feeding into their propaganda narratives uh, by echoing or, or using um, these same words. Uh, I think we all should remain quite calm, applaud uh, the visit by uh, Speaker of the House Pelosi. We know this was not an easy decision. We know yes. there's a lot of pros and cons. Uh, I also empathize, obviously, with the people of Taiwan in this moment who were yes. will actually bear the brunt Laura, of um, I, I want Beijing's to understand from you or... also this, before I bring in other panelists, uh, that does it have to more to do with Nancy Pelosi, given a long history of opposing Beijing? I think... She doesn't have a history of opposing Beijing. She has a history of standing up for human rights, for defending those rights defenders, the people of China that have been, been oppressed for over 70 years by the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, she is standing up for the rule of law, as a lot of people uh, in many countries are, including inside China. Um, the only fact is that those people trying to do it within mainland China or now Hong Kong, and maybe tomorrow, you know, if, if um, Beijing had its way in Taiwan, um, they can't do this. So this is the reason why people around the world are rallying around Nancy Pelosi because of the message she is, she is sending. And let's, let's remind everybody, this is not the first, you know, uh, member of Congress, obviously That's she's right. the Speaker of the House, but member of Congress making a visit. There's so many members of Parliament from across the world that have been making visits to Taiwan to express exactly this message in support with the people of Taiwan, who again, I want to remind, will bear the brunt of Beijing's anger in this, as we have seen already through the measures that have been 
been taken since last night uh, with unilateral economic sanctions and so on. So I think we're all very much looking forward uh, to understand what will happen in the next days. But moreover, I'd say what will happen in the next weeks and will Beijing, you know, bring down its tone from where it's escalating at the present moment. Okay, what are you sensing, Andrew Leung, given the tone and tonality of uh, the statements that are coming in from China's foreign ministry uh, about this visit of Nancy Pelosi? With every press release, it seems to be with with sharper words. Uh, you know, uh, they, they are saying that it gravely undermines peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait and sends a seriously wrong signal to the separatist forces for Taiwan independence. Then they also talk about the equation and the relationship between the U.S. and um, uh, China. Do you think, uh, is... is uh, China looking at escalating this or are you of the opinion, opinion that this is mere rhetoric or, or some kind of warning which will not hold? Well, let's face it, both uh, China and the United States uh, neither uh, wants a war yes. uh, because uh, the coming up uh, in November are key events uh, for both sides. For the, Thai, for the Chinese, uh, there is the National People's Congress, uh, which is going to confirm uh, President Xi's third term and to unveil uh, the new leadership, uh, the new uh, leadership lineup, um, the uh, members of the uh, permanent members of the uh, Politburo, the seven top leaders, including a replacement uh, for the current premier, Li Jiaqiang. As far as the United States is concerned, of course, the, it's the midterm elections coming up, uh, where uh, President Biden uh, and Nancy Pelosi uh, may lose uh, control uh, over the House and the Senate. So I think that both countries don't want a war. But on the other hand, both countries cannot be seen uh, to, uh, uh, to, then to in have that their case, This is more war. like a Taiwan card that U.S. is playing. Because even as we speak, and as I said, that there's constant warning that is coming from China. Uh, there's a piece of...